Hello. Hello. Hello, Michael. Can you hear me? I can hear you good. Well, uh, thank you very much for your time in the, in the first place. Uh, it's an it's honor to talk to you. Well, thank you. In the first place, just, just uh, to start in, in, in the right way. I'd like you to introduce yourself to our audience, but the way you would like to be introduced. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm Michael Graves, and I'm a I'm a performer. I'm an artist. I'm a musician, and I'm always humbled and honored to be able to have opportunities like this to talk to people like you who are interested in in me and my life and and my work. Great, great. Well, uh, I don't think you you remember, but uh, you were you were singing here in our city in Corrientes. This is Corriente City, Argentina, uh, with Marky a few years ago. But we saw you there and, and it was great. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was a wonderful time. I remember coming there with Marky and it was, it, it was again, an, an honor to come to Argentina. Tina especially playing the Ramones songs because mm. even more so I think than than Misfits music Ramones is wildly popular and, yeah. and and meaningful more than popular it's meaningful music to people. What do you think uh, that uh, happened this this kind of things with with some bands just a few bands uh, one of them is uh, Ramones. Uh, I, I remember that show there were a lot of people who never show up in, in rock shows, in rock gigs. And, and they were there. They were uh, there to, to see uh, Ramones. Why, why with them? Uh, I, I, I think it's, it's, like, it's like Misfits music. The way that Ramones music reaches into every Um, corner of you know all the different pockets of whether you're a metalhead or a punk rocker or somebody that's not those things mm -hmm. I, but just because of the nature of that music um it's it speaks to people and and and, and crosses so many different barriers uh why um i, I I really think that it's it's thematic with somebody like Joey Ramone. You know, the heart and the soul of that music is just, it's nothing but an expression of this is the way I am and this is the way that I want to live. And um, just the, you know, the independent spirit of that music, I think translates um, across all, all barriers and, and, and mm -hmm. all genres of music. Yeah, people get that totally. Well, um, going back in time, you were um, maybe 20 years old, and you are in, in front of a, of a microphone replacing Glenn Danzig. How is it for, for a kid? Uh, I had a lot of confidence. I was able to do what I did because I had so much confidence. Uh -huh. And that and I was able to defend myself against all of the difficulties that the that the business part and the and the pressures of that life and all of the things that came upon me. I had confidence in my ability to to be me and confidence in my abilities on the stage. And I didn't do a lot of interviews. I stayed away from um a lot of the trappings of that of that lifestyle and i and i focused on on being great because i knew even as a young man that the misfits were very very important as far as music history goes glenn danzig is a super important as well and i was continuing his legacy in a band that he created music that he wrote in a legacy that was not mine and in a lot of ways i had no business getting involved with and so that was that weighed heavy on my mind because because it was so important um 
so I, I, I just pushed away all the other things that a lot of, I think a lot of people get trapped in and distracted by. Um, and I really just focused on making myself as great as I could be so that when I got on the stage or I was singing, I, I was, I was, I was great. Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. Um, in those years, uh, you were touring, uh, you were touring a lot with, with, with Megadeth. And so yeah. they say, so they say you had some interesting chats with, uh, with Dave Mustaine. Is it true? Yeah, it's absolutely true. We, I got to tour with Megadeth on the Cryptic Writings tour, uh -huh. and it was um, it was an interesting time in Dave's life, and I've, it was an interesting time in my life too. And he really saw that I was a young man in a swimming in a in very deep water, and um, I, he recognized you know he recognized that in me, and and would often tell me old stories about when he was starting. And I, I, he told me stories about when, when he was in Metallica and we had really, really great chats, really, really great conversations that he would always roll into something along the lines of, so don't worry. You know, he would say things like, so don't worry. Don't let these things consume you. Don't let the, the fire of the industry consume you. And we talked about, We talked about substance abuse and just all the, the trappings of the industry and, and life. And he was just, a, it's funny. He was, he was so gentle with me and Dave Mustaine doesn't ever come across as a gentle person, but mm -hmm. I, I think it was my, you know, it was my age and, and my innocence. And he saw that. And even back then, you know, he's, he's a weathered dude. Um, and he, and he really took time to, to be a mentor and yeah, I'll, 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 I'll always, I'll always respect him. I'll, I'll always be thankful for for Dave Mustaine. And at that time, he, he was already out of uh, alcohol and drugs and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, was he some kind of uh, influence uh, on you with with, the, with those stuff? I mean, well, we uh, we had. I mean, we had conversations about 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 substance abuse. I, I only. You know, I, I wasn't caught up in, in those trappings yet in my life. Mm -hmm. um, but again, he, he we would sit and we would talk about the things that that I was going through. And he would tell me about things that he was going through and really helped me to to keep my mind uh, on on the narrow path on, mm -hmm. on the on the road that will not kill me, uh -huh. you know, or 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 you know, you see a lot of guys in, in the industry that are driven into the ditch, whether it's despair or sadness, depression, and get caught up in alcohol and drugs and violence and things that, that off ramp their, their life. Um, yeah. you know, and, and Dave understood that, that I was kind of lost and, you know, and like he always said, I, I had greatness in the way that I performed and, and sang. Mm -hmm. And so, Um, is there a point where uh, drugs stop being funny, we could say, and start uh, to hurt? Or, or is it something gradual? Uh, when, when you say, let's stop with this? Well, I, when I was very young, and again, I, I didn't really get into, I didn't have a problem with anything, we'll, we'll mm -hmm. say, until, you know, I was... Um, you know, my late thirties getting into my, my, my forties, I'm 47 now. So when you're young, it's one thing. And I, obviously I saw a, a lot, a lot of that. Um, it, it starts to become, you know, not funny and, and take a different track when you start to see people die mm -hmm. or you start to see people get very, very sick. Mm -hmm. Both of, unfortunately, I, I know a lot of, people that have passed away from 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 the trappings of drugs and i know people mm -hmm. that are that are sick from it and and it's an awful awful thing um uh so yeah it's 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 an easy trap to get stuck in it, yeah. it really is and and it's one of those things with um 
uh, with, with addiction, you hardly even know that you're in the middle of this raging addiction until, until you're, until you're sick, until mm-hmm. you're in the middle of it and you need help. Um, right. and it's a very difficult thing for, for people, you know, especially, you know, especially men and because, you know, people like me or people even that I've worked with, whether they were in the industry or especially mm-hmm. military people that were in the military, it's hard for, for, for men, especially, um, that have that nature to say I'm hurting and I mm-hmm. have a problem and I need yeah. help and I don't know what to do anymore. It's yeah. hard to say that. And it's hard to come to that and then go through all the reasons why you might be hurting in that way. It's not an easy thing to do. Yeah, totally. And, and talking about, uh, difficult things, I guess, uh, playing uh, punk rock and hardcore in the 90s uh, must have been hard the world the world was looking to other side we could say <laughs> yeah well what did, when when i was in the misfits we didn't we didn't um we didn't tour with a lot of punk bands we toured with with um a lot of all, all of the hardcore bands, like all of the hardcore bands, sick mm-hmm. of it all, Crow mm-hmm. Mags and Ignite, Mad Ball, any typo negative. And a lot of the guys that were in uh, the New York City hardcore scene, and th- there was a big uh, Canadian hardcore scene. A lot of these guys were, they were vegetarians, they were vegans. A lot of them were straight edge too. So there was always that element around us, which was great because the misfits, we were a clean band um, you know, working out, we were very, very health conscious. And so a lot of the habits and a lot of the things that I, I that I've learned about eating clean and, and having your mind clear and your body clear really came from being around all those hardcore guys back in the day mm-hmm. we didn't, we didn't, with, with punk rock, punk rock, when we went out had really became like the emo movement. And then there was, you know, there was the big West coast from America, the, the, uh, you know, West coast bands, no effects and, you know, green day bands like that. Uh, but we were much more, uh, always with, with hardcore, hardcore bands. Mm-hmm. And, and how did you leave this, uh, uh, grunge, Um, story when when everybody was uh, trying to to be in Nirvana or some garden and, <laughs> and things like that. Yeah, how was it for, for a musician who didn't play that kind of, of music? I I really enjoy that music. I, I love that music. The one thing I always and I continue to despise about the grunge movement that was also the the neo punk movement was that it was. You know, everyone says, oh, your guitar is out of tune. You can hardly sing. You guys sound like crap. I don't worry about it. It's punk rock. And so there was this attitude of mediocrity. Like, oh, you don't even have to be that good. You mm-hmm. don't even have to play your instrument. And, and, you'll, and you can be a punk band. Mm-hmm. And that's totally foreign to me. And that was, that was a, a big sentiment in the, in, the, you know, in the genre, in the punk mm-hmm. genre. Well, yeah. you know, You didn't have to be, you don't have to worry about soloing or, or being good. And there was really that, um, that mediocrity that, that you didn't have to be good or practice or you could just be lazy mm. and, 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 and be great. And that, that's really what, you know, the mainstream media and the industry did to Nirvana. I mean, he, Kurt Cobain was, was a really good guitar player right they were an amazing musician and those guys always got where you know like songs would just show up in kurt cobain's mailbox yeah you don't even have to try um so that i, I always despised that part of punk or whatever mm-hmm. you call it um th- this is um maybe uh, a tricky part of the interview because you had a lot of a lot of problems we could say with you know this uh black lives matter uh you were banned on 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 social media how do you see this kind of behavior because i i don't i don't really get when this uh, kind of uh we could say uh way of thinking and and, be, and they begin to to be part of this uh, cancel culture how is it what's the limit um 
I, I don't, I don't, I don't know where the, the limit is. I mean, that's the scary thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you get a certain segment of people uh, that, 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 that are okay with this sort of thing. And you have to think that when you are able to, to cancel somebody online and basically kill their, their online presence, mm-hmm. Not only do we exist in a physical world now, much of our lives, our business lives, our personal lives, a lot of our life is on the internet, takes place on the internet. So if you take somebody out of that, that does serious harm. It did serious harm to me. Um, it's, it's disturbing because the, the, the content in like the things that I was saying, certainly people disagree with, but I was saying th- these things in disagreement with others, which is what makes all societies great. The animating contest of ideas um, and having conversations about disagreements and agreements. It's a very, very healthy thing for obviously for society and for individuals on, uh, you know, on, on, a, on an individual level. Um, I have always, um, been a loving person. There's nothing in my past that somebody could ever point to that would, that would give any sort of, um, you know, reality credence to people calling me a Nazi or, Mm -hmm. or, somebody that hates gay people or, or hates people because of the color of their skin or anything like that. It's just not that it's not true. And so another scary part of this, for example, when my band members left and quit and it was, and, and people that have known me for 20 years and they know me, they know the things that were saying, being said about me are not true. Uh, and to turn your back on somebody or to not stand up for somebody when you know that things that are being said about them are, are not true is, is it's a very scary premise. Um, you know, and there's a larger conversation you can have about why that happens and why that's happening to us. But it's a very, very scary thing. Mm-hmm. It's not too far back. I mean, I, I know the, the, the history of you know, I'm sure in Argentinian history and mm-hmm. obviously in Latin American history, you yeah. know better than than us Americans um, about oppression and authoritarianism and, you know, what the what what larger powers can do to to dissent. It wasn't mm-hmm. that far ago where, you know, our grandfathers, our grandparents fought World War Two and they were doing the same things to, to Jewish people and making them lower than dogs. And we're doing that again to people. And it's one thing if you disagree, if you disagree with me, that's fine. But what happens when we step over the line, when we say that I disagree with you by these things that you're saying, and I also believe that you're morally corrupt, you're less than a human, you're less than a human for these things. Mm -hmm. And that's when we get into very dangerous territory. And whether that's music or any, any facet of our life, we we need to go in the opposite direction yeah because um this kind of, of behavior we could say makes that things uh when you are part of the of the minor minor portion of society you're wrong you must think uh, just like the most of the people let me tell you <laughs> I don't know if it's right that, that I say this, but uh, I told so, uh, some, some people, I was talking to you, and one of them told me, uh, you're going to uh, you, you're talk to Graves? Really? You shouldn't, because uh, he's, uh, he hates uh, gays, Muslims, uh, immigrants, feminists, uh, everything. <laughs> This guy doesn't have a proof, one single That's proof. Right. Of, of what he's what he's saying but um he he was trying to protect me just like you were talking about uh, uh, you're talking about uh, your band members 
these guys was trying that I don't uh, don't stand up beside you. The people, uh, the, the, the other people don't see me talking to you. It doesn't matter if you're wrong, right or wrong. He's, he was trying to protect me. Don't associate with you. It's it's terrible, I think. And and it's and it's dangerous as well because, like you said, that person doesn't really know my heart, and they have no proof of these things. Again, if you were calling me a bad musician, you don't like the way I sing, you don't like the way that I write yeah. lyrics. That's one thing. But we're talking when you say Nazi, right, or you say homophobe or hate. That's a whole different level to be compared to a Nazi. It would be to compared or put into a, um, that category is, is a very dangerous, is a very dangerous thing, you know, and, and, and therefore I always say, I wish that more people that believe those things that are in the media would call me up and talk to me and mm -hmm. ask me the questions, ask me hard questions, anything that you want. And I, and I'll give them as much time as, as they want or they need. And I'll explain from A to Z how I feel and what's in my heart and in, in my soul. Come right out and ask me the difficult questions and I'll answer them. And I also tell them as well, before you do that interview, dig into my past. Mm -hmm. And if you find something, let's talk about it. I didn't. I didn't find anything. Michael, do you think a song like uh, Les Carres uh, could be uh, composed today? You know, um, Glenn Danzig uh, alluded to that, that is that a song like Last Caress or a lot of the music that people love, a lot of the music that people love and those same people, you know, are, are coming up to you saying that, you know, don't talk to him. He's a crazy person. <laughs> um, uh, um, no, in, in, There, there, there would be a danger in 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 writing songs like that, you know, and, that, and that's again the whole cancel culture's um, it, it, why it's dangerous is because then people are afraid to say things, mm -hmm. they're afraid to express themselves. It has a chilling effect on individualism to when then you're not you don't feel free to be yourself or you don't feel free to to express yourself in a way. And what that does to music is art. It makes everything gray. How can you how can you be fully yourself? If how can I be fully myself if I'm not able to completely express myself? Well, then yeah. somebody will say, well, it's because it's because you are with the the conservatives or you're with the Christians or you're with this. And so you know, well, that's not a bad thing. You know, you're with this, and and so it again it comes down to what we're doing right here is talking to one another truthfully and honestly and um i guess uh, art is the the most sensible uh, territory for for where we really need uh, free speech freedom of yes. expression um, art need to be to be free or not <laughs> yes yeah uh, art And music and that form of expression is 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 a very very important to the sustenance of a society. Very very important in, in culture. And again, when you when you get away from and you start to oppress free expression, art and music and and those sort of communicative things start to get sour. And it mm -hmm. leads people in, into, uh, you know, 1984, where people believe two plus two is five. And it, when you start to mess with truth and reality in that way, it does terrible things to, to the human psyche. Because I think, like we were talking about, um, you know, like Ramon's music or Misfits music or any music, the reason that it's so attractive is because of the, in, the independent spirit of it. That's what punk is, is. It's just complete independence of being whomever you wish or whatever you want. And that's not just an American thing. And that's just not a, 
you know, that's a, that's a, just a human thing to want to be free and independent and express yourself openly and freely and have the ability to become whatever you want or whatever you wish free of, of the bonds of, of, of those things. Um, and so when you start to oppress those things and, and choke those off, like, like is being done, especially in my country, it has devastating effects, not only on the larger social scale, but to individuals as well. It starts to really suck away your life force because it's unnatural. Yeah. Well, um, Michael, tell the people here in Argentina, why should they go to see you uh, in the next tour? Because the, the show that I give is, is nonstop power. It's energetic. It's, it's focused on music and, and performance. And there's lots of smiles and happiness. And it's a celebration of this great music that's been with us for the music that I've been making for, for 27 years now. This great music that is a part of my life and part of so many other people's lives. And it very much feels like a celebration of of all of that and of all of us because the music it brings people back to their high school days it, people connect with their children it reminds you of good things it reminds you of bad things it feels it feels good um and so people should absolutely come out for the for the music and 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 for the the raw emotion and power behind it because there's not there's not a lot of that Right. Everybody's staring at their phones and they're looking at their computers and they're they're stuck in that matrix. And, and music music helps cleanse us of those things, especially again, when it's truthful and honest, independent and powerful like my music is. Great, great. Well, uh, Michael, I need you to choose three uh, Misfits songs, if you like or whatever you want to you, you want to okay. here just to close the interview. Oh, man. Um, how about horror, horror business? Uh huh. Great song. Let's do horror business. Let's do crying on Saturday night. And how about, uh, how about fiend without a face? Great. Thank you very much, Michael. Uh, a real honor to talk to you. Uh, it was Thank really, you. really a, a good thing for us. Thank you. I really, really look forward to, to seeing everybody. I hope we may all see you too. Yeah, I hope so. All right. All right. <laughs> Goodbye, man. It's a pleasure. Take care. Thank you.